Yeah, these two snuggets. Uh, they're marching with American flags, and then in the middle row, they're three wide, and in the middle row, people are holding the Confederate flag. Right. Uh, this is a new group. These are uh, these are a new little group of fellas here. Uh, it reminds me of beautiful city. It, it reminds me of uh, South Park. When Cartman gets all the marching in khakis uh, for hits of uh, Passion of the Christ rally yeah. against Mel Gibson. <laughs> khakis re required, evidently, to join the Nazis now. Which, you know, makes sense. It's good fashion. All right. And so, you know, we had these guys, as you can see, all clearly masked up. No one can see their face. Uh, some of these people wearing sunglasses, so literally not, not even eye contact can be made. And now the racist group, the Proud Boys, uh, discovered that uh, these guys were doing this and uh, in, in the streets of Tennessee. And uh, it escalated, I would say. Time! Calling everybody! It's almost like I'm watching Chicago right now. All right, so they're beating the crap out of these these little Nazi studs. Uh, and then, of course, there was the response in New Orleans. I don't know if you saw this, but the Black Hebrews are out, and uh, and they're doing their little march in New Orleans. Nothing scares a white man more than an organized group of black people marching. All right, so we've got three different factions just out and about right now in the United States. And this Nazi thing, I think we've let go far enough. It's time to discuss it a little bit because it's here in South Dakota. And if it's here in South Dakota, it means it's just about everywhere. Seems uh, Florida, Tennessee, a lot of right-wing states are having uh, Nazi marches. Yes, it's become uh, very popular. Yeah, it's very interesting. Never heard of these groups before either. No, no. And uh, and it turns out that like you know KKK memberships all time low, all time yeah. low. So there's something fishy, right? First of all, I've never met. Any group of Americans disorganized? No. <laughs> for something they do for free. Uh, it's not the Americans. I just, well, when I saw the, this clip, I was just, imagine you, you're like, oh, man, I'm going to join the FBI. I'm going to do some cool undercover shit. I'm going to do something awesome. No. What? Wait, just, wait, 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 you're making the assumption this is FBI. How, well, you, you don't think this saying. is natural? You no. don't think this is natural? No, you don't this think this is a group of... Uh, right wingers out there that want to return to Nazi Germany? No, this is you signed up cuz you thought you were going to do some cool shit and then they gave you an assignment and mm -hmm. a fucking little backpack with your clothes in it and then you get the shit beat out of you by regular people who give a fuck and then you're like I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this, mom. I got beat up in Nashville by somebody. I just wanted to go undercover. You know? Like listen, I, I I've talked to I've talked to a lot of people and none of them believe that the FBI is running this. You know, like people that don't listen to the show, just random people. You bring it up. And if anything, they're just very unnerved by it. What does this mean? Like, I don't think there's even a real understanding of why they're seeing it. They just mm -hmm. know they're seeing it. It's being yes. published in the papers. It's being shown on TV. You see it nightly on ABC. Don't worry. Fan effects has looked into this and we are about to tell you that it's all okay this is just a bunch of uh bureaucrats having fun this is fun to do this is their time too to shy election time now before you call me nuts we have fbi informants that have come out and openly said that they organized nazi rallies 
The first one we want to play is uh, David Getty. Now, he appeared on a podcast, and we're going to try to reach out to him, too, because we're way better than the podcast he was on. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Uh, but this was what he said. Why he worked for the FBI, I think it was like 98 to 2007. So when I got exposed, it was a big deal for a little while. I'm all over the news, CNN, my hometown newspaper. It was a big deal because at the time, the FBI, just before that, was having me put on Nazi protests. And there was Nazi protests going on across the country that were handled by the FBI and operatives like myself. And that when I took the step out there, because I had to get the permits in my name, if you check the records, the permits for the... Which they did. And uh, absolutely, he had filed in 2005 for a parade in Orlando for Nazis. The Orlando. Which was paid for by the FBI. Florida Nazi protest in 2005, was in, or six, was in my name. And I was all over the newspaper and people that knew me was like, Oh my God, what happened to David Galetti? I used to go out with him in high school. You know, my mom's like, David, what the happened to you? I just saw the newspaper. You're having a Nazi protest. I didn't raise you like that. And I was all in. That was the first time, you know, when you get your picture in the newspaper as a Nazi and you're having a Nazi protest, you're all in. I had events at my home that I still live in. I have two homes. So he goes on. I mean, great interview. Look it up. David Getty with uh, uh, what's the name? on? I don't think you can see the name on the thing. Just look up the, the guy in the red. Uh, that's what the podcast is under. Um, yeah. Surprise. Not me. Not me. But I think people that do watch this uh, might be a little surprised to see that. Now, I, I'm not just going to stop there, people. We've got plenty of plenty of interviews. Here's one. Uh, this is how the FBI goes about entrapment. Uh, let me see here. Be, 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 be. Yeah, right. I think this is it. Put anyone in jail if you know what to do. How? Does the Bureau practice entrapment a lot? Yeah, we get really. So this is the guy, Gavin Obinus. Uh, and, and the. He uh, worked for the FBI and the C and currently works for the CIA as a contractor. Close. We call it a no. It's all undercover. Well, watch this guy's facial expressions. A nudge. A nudge. Mm. Sometimes you just gotta give him a quick look. This is a little bit of a longer one. I think it's like four minutes. So stop me whenever you want. Uh, this is just a little cold open though. Uh, this is him going over who this guy is. A little bit. He took his money away. Shot his legs off. <laughs> Sound Gavin Oblenis is a contracting officer at the CIA. Oblenis worked for the FBI in 2021 and 2022 in the San Diego office, moved on to Homeland Security where he conducted asylum interviews at the southern border, and now works for the CIA managing multi-million dollar contracts across government agencies and private sector vendors. I work for, um, how do I put this without, I'm not supposed to tell people kind of uh, this is just him bragging. I mean, you can see he's like bragging, like, ah, I went to CIA. I do. That's incredible. The contracting officer. That's amazing. So I deal a lot with like different agencies. Uh, we're contracting with like uh, Director of National Intelligence to do stuff. We do Navy, Army. All right, so this goes in. You just is goes he on like a grinder date? Why is he so openly That's, just. That is immediately what I thought of, May. As he doesn't it seem like he's sort of like br doing a little brag, like, hey, look what I do, don't I? He's got sugar in his water, and this that's where I think he's like just mm -hmm. opening up way too much because way too much. And it's over a period of several dates to an undercover sound investigation, at least three, about his work experience involving near entrapment and his employer's involvement with political commentator Alex Jones's legal battles. As long as the Bureau is able to progress far enough to be able to put pro-lifers in jail whenever they want. Yeah. You and think that's on the agenda? We can, we can, you can kind of put anyone in jail if you know what to do. How? Oh, isn't that nice to know? <laughs> They're only using it for the bad guys, though, people. Remember yeah. that. Only for mm -hmm. the bad guys. You create the situation to where they have no choice but to act on their impulse. 
And once they act on that impulse, then we call that entrapment. It's a fine line. Notice how he waves his hands back and forth while describing line as if that's malleable. Like the fine line is whatever we decide the fine line to be. Does the Bureau practice entrapment a lot? We get really close. Not officially? No. We get as close as we can. We get as close as we can to it without doing it. So they can entrap some of these pro-lifers into doing things that they don't... Depending, yeah. We call it a nudge. A nudge. Give them a nudge. Give them a nudge. Now, I understand what you may be saying. Like, well, maybe if they are like legitimate Al-Qaeda terrorists planning to overthrow the city of Minneapolis. You know, I mean, I, I... No, we don't want to nudge that. We want that. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm. I'm not on the agenda. Mm. Sometimes you just got to give them a quick look just to see what happens, right? And how does that happen? You put a post out there or you have some fake profile say something that triggers that we know is going to trigger them right like we, we already know your history if we're to that point we already know everything about it so we're like oh this will piss them off oh, sometimes you like the fuse and just wait for it to follow right like a railing mm-hmm. like a oh so when a railing happens that sometimes that the bureau behind it yeah sometimes Nothing like putting out a fake social media thing to like really get people mad. Mm-hmm. Post fake news. Sometimes it's not <laughs> fake. You know, this is this is why more and more people are are getting off of social media because they understand that it's all just a big old fucking nasty trap. And you know, like you, it's not what it used to be. You get on social media to catch up and yada yada. Now it's all just. How could we turn the great people against or throw them away to silence them? I'm it's not like that, I'm sure, but it's just like Well, man. at what point did the FBI get involved with doing the social media posts? You know, I thought they were out catching Al Qaeda. They were out, you know, catching Finding Timothy. The FBI McVay. most want us. Yeah. Yes. Yes. What you know, that was the whole premise, right? Someone who crossed state lines and stole a car. The FBI Finding missing children. Doing something good. No, they, they don't even touch that. God forbid the FBI and all of their Nazi rallies, they can't help find a few traffic kids. Got to leave that to the local sheriff departments. Embellished a little bit. <laughs> Who would be like a big influence that you're, influencer that you're after? You're like a, I don't know, like a, I don't even know these names, like a Fox News person or like oh. a Tucker Carlson or like, uh, oh, I'm sure he's a right. You always want the biggest and loudest. Like that, what was his name? The one that said uh, the Sandy Hook didn't happen. Alex loud. Jones. Yeah, so we were after him. You are? Airport. Are you still after him? Why? Because he's broke. He got found guilty and had to pay like $100 million. So what, why were you after him? We're not anymore. Just to get the money from him? Yeah. 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 That's fucking disgusting. Yeah. Um, go on our X to see the full interview of that um, and see who posted that. But that's not all me. I've got even uh, more. I mean, should stuff. this scare people or should this open well, eyes? Listen, in a sense? I don't is, want you to live in fear, but on the other hand, you got to be aware that, like, exactly, you know, like this is out there. Um, they said the difference between the American population and like the Russian population and the Chinese population, the difference with Americans is they don't recognize what the actual organizations are being used for propaganda. And so like in Russia, you knew it was the KGB, you knew state media was the state media, you knew now know the FSB is the FSB. And it's just common knowledge. Like, whenever you're watching something, you take it with a grain of salt. Like, oh, this may be just a complete win. We'll get to that, how the FBI does that. Because we're going to progress as this story goes on. Uh, January 6th is where I want to go next. Right? Uh, Now, as you know, Freedom of Information Act in America can request all the body cam footage you want. Uh, from the police and they are to provide it as long as they were using it which 
you know, of course, if you're going to shoot a airplane or airport director in the head, you would not want to bring that. Or like, you know, in the Las Vegas shooting, you definitely wouldn't want that either. But in other instances, you can request Freedom of Information Act videos. And uh, and they did for the January 6th riots. And this is just one interesting one that I wanted to share. This is the uh, Capitol Police, not the FBI, but this Capitol Police. Uh, you know, the same group of people here uh, working undercover during the uh, January 6th um, riots. It covers the antifa in the crowd. So. Yeah, so they went under as undercover agents as eat antifa in the crowd. Can you put that and, back in? All right, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, it feels better. You guys get sprayed. Here, here. Take this on. So obviously, this is the uh, officer got sprayed by pepper spray during the whole uh, ordeal uh, during the January 6th riots, the insurrection. Um, what what were undercover cops doing as Antifa Very in true. a Trump rally? Yeah, why? Why? I mean, I feel like that's a, a it's a fair question to ask. Why were they wearing? So, what, and it is. What were they wearing to make sure that they didn't get the bullet or the owie? You know, pepper spray. You can you know dust that off, but you know when you got all these moving pieces inside of this spider web and just to make a certain group of individuals look bad well and it makes you wonder how many people were at that rally who were undercover yes well mate by golly we found out at least how many hours of people were there that were those undercover. individuals were inside the capitol to which the ssa responded back and I was privy to these conversations firsthand. Why can't you show us why can't you just send us the give us access to the eleven thousand hours of video of this exam that's available? Because there may be may be UCs, undercover officers, or CHS's confidential human for confidential human sources on those videos whose identity we need to protect. 11,000 hours of video footage from the Capitol riots in January 6th will not be released to the public because they don't want to identify accidentally. How yeah. many concealed... I mean, there, was, there was millions at that rally. How many yeah. were How many were undercover that they had? That sounds like a ton. 11,000 hours? That, that sounds like a lot. So, that's not just one guy on Pornhub. That's that's a that's a village. It's a village of people. But I, you know what? I admire you for the way that you uh, that you measure time. May <laughs> you know I I hear it one way, and then I realize without May, I would never realize that we're. <laughs> okay, uh, it was a only in America moment. We're going to discuss my favorite undercover FBI plot uh, that happened just a few years ago. And it just so happens the person involved is chomping at the bit to take over Joe Biden's job at the Democratic National Convention. And she herself was involved in a little fishy business. So we'll go back to 2019. Right before the, or 2020, right before the election, October, right? Set your mind. Everything's in a frenzy. Trump, Biden, politically, what's going on? Uh, and then this happens, and it's all over the news. And thank God for our FBI. This is, uh, this happens in Michigan, October 3rd, I believe. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Thursday night. That major very busy, very busy hurricane about to hit the U.S. The second presidential debate now called off after President Trump objected to it being a virtual town hall to protect everyone. 
But we're going to begin tonight with that alleged terror plot and the chilling plan. The FBI says it stopped before it could be. I want everyone to pay attention to how the news covers this story. It carried out a plan to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and then what they were planning to do to. All right, let's just pause this because Lobo comes up with a great. Yeah, yeah Lobo here. just crushes it out of the park. 11,000 hours divided by an eight hour day is 1,375 agents. Good on you, Lobo. Good God, on thank, you. Thank you, Lobo. That's great. That's a ridiculous amount of agents. All right, all right. Let's reset here. You're watching the daily news, May, and uh, and you're hearing about the a terror attack, a terror attack boiled. Now, when I think of terror attack, maybe I'm just old timer Corey over here, but I think 9/11. I think buildings getting blown up, thousands of people dying, maybe even a school shooting. You know. Maybe even a school shooting, I'll count that as a terror attack. I, Las Vegas. I'll put Las Vegas there, you know. But uh, no, no. FBI has just released to all the news agencies. It has foiled the plot to kidnap the governor of Michigan. 13 suspects arrested, including seven alleged members of a... 13 people are arrested here. Now, seven of them are a member of... Well, we'll get to Right-wing militia group. The FBI. God damn. You know what? Kudos to the left wing militia groups out there. Yeah. They're never Yeller on top of it. No. On Dude. top of it. Well what, done. What groups do you guys do? Because I, I, that's the ones I want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Are we knitting, making Let's... cookies? What, like, you have it buttoned up. Uh, I'm impressed. Clean. It's clean. All right. Well, let's get, let's go back to these horrible right wingers. I and state authority. Remember, less. Then a month away from the election of 20 he's conducting a series of raids in Michigan. First of all, that looks like footage from Afghanistan. Can we just say that? That looks like the footage I saw on Fahrenheit 9-11 while they were raiding houses and Humvees. Uh, the only difference is, is I see a, a Chevy. Those 13 suspects taken into custody, seven of them alleged members of that right-wing militia group. Once again, we heard you the first time. But no. Now, the number one tool for propaganda, repetition. You must repeat and repeat. Governor Whitmer has been the target of protests since last spring over restrictions aimed to stop the spread of COVID amid one of the early outbreaks. Michigan, of course, a hot spot at the time. Today, Governor Whitmer thanking authorities for protecting her and her family, but went on to talk about white supremacists in this country. And the president, who she pointed out, was asked to condemn white supremacists on that debate stage You'll remember the president saying, stand back and stand by. Our chief justice course. I forgot all about that. They made such a big deal out of that, too. Yes. Oh my God. That was fun of Pierre Thomas leading us off tonight. The alleged plot nightmarish. Nightmarish. Uh, I have also determined after extensive study of Governor Whitmer that she is the Democrat doppelganger of Christy No. So Ooh. it says you put both of these on the opposite ends of a scale. Christy Noem here, Governor Whitmer there, and they even themselves out because they are both morons. Earlier today, Attorney General Dana Nessel was joined by officials from the Department of Justice. First of all, why is the sign lady so happy? Her job almost got kidnapped. And the FBI to announce state and federal charges against 13 members of two militia groups who were preparing to kidnap and possibly kill me. The FBI. Which why she looked like she got off when she said, "Yeah, oh, he wants to kidnap your fucking bitch ass." And state police seen here raiding a home and detaining an individual took action after the men met this week to exchange tactical gear and to pool their okay. money to allegedly buy explosives. The mission: attack the governor before election day. Authorities claim the planning was months in the making, with the men even going to the governor's vacation home. Now we should not. We should not, uh, uh, looks like a sign, dude, Rocky Short. Uh, we should not just be assuming that uh, uh, these guys, I mean, this, how it's being reported is very scary, right? I mean, like, these guys are nightmarish plans, um, perhaps even kill the governor. Twice to conduct surveillance. 
Two of the suspects allegedly had a plan to create a diversion. Discussed detonating explosive devices to divert police from the area of the home. This is a highly dangerous group. They Highly dangerous group. Uh, just, you know, to really give you the idea of how how scary of a situation this was. I'm, let's bring in uh, Lobo Fish joins us for the comments. Lobo, are you are you terrified? Are you absolutely Hey, terrified? what's up, guys? Thanks uh, for yeah, this hey the good show again tonight, guys. Um, thank, thank you. You. you know, I've uh you know, I'm a middle aged guy. I've seen the best, uh, lived through the nineties, had the, lived the, the best uh American life. And uh everything since January sixth has me um just shaken up with these guys because even when the day that was happening you know i'm I'm way out here in new mexico and is outraged as i was or about that election yeah i could just see that as a setup from a mile away and i was just shaking my head and then ever since then how they've detained these people with no uh it's just so un-american what was alert. What, what was what was more unnerving um about the January 6th and how it was handled compared to just covid in general well the, the January 6th the way i was looking at it, it it looked like a total bait situation where they were i i, I mean i could just see it i'm like they, they're they're setting these guys up and they're going to they're going to throw them all in jail and that's exactly what happened and to learn, like you guys are showing us today, I mean, could have been a thousand agents in the in the crowd. Well, that that's just, just kinda... that's first of all, great stat that you thank you for sharing that. But that's just the hours they won't release. So I mean, all we right. don't even we don't even know. You know, there are you know just that one footage we saw of the guy dressed as Antifa. We you know we saw his footage. So there's evidently even more hours of video with them in there. So it's. Well, and the other thing is it shouldn't surprise anybody because those fucking pop-up little rallies they were doing all over before January 6th, a lot of a lot of police officers or or agencies got busted for, you know, undercover shit stirring. You know, it, I think it was the FBI that got caught in Michigan, one of the guys like burning down um like a liquor store or something, you know, trying to be you know trying to give them a bad rap or whatever and everybody just sniffed it right out and then like like lobo said just get that whole situation to get baited in on january 6th and then you know to just keep these people as prisoners like they're you know well in the january 6th the january 6th thing too what was unnerving about it was first of all they shot that chick and killed her Uh, Um, yeah and she was air force you know, she was active military and and they kept talking about all the Capitol Police members that died that day. And there was none. Mm-hmm. And and they still talk about that to this day. And they just pretend it happened. Didn't they die after they retired or something? Wasn't that the big thing about the security or the, the you know, didn't they all all retire or all like, pass away after? Not all of them, but I thought that I thought that was a I could be there was, way there off was in the no weeds. Cap, well, there was no Capitol Police that died. Uh, from no, the I mean, not yeah, right. not from the yeah. riots, but mysteriously after. Oh, you know, uh, the I mean, that's prob- probably wouldn't surprise yeah, me. I any. remember something like that. Probably the people that wanted to tell the truth about all the undercover exactly. agents out there. Those are probably the ones that died. L- Lobo, you got time to hang around uh, while we finish? Yeah, this yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have you have you ever heard about this uh, Governor Whitmer? No, I'm learning right now. Okay. All right. So now, uh, let's see. Where were we? Uh, oh yeah, we're we're watching the broadcast of how uh, ABC is handling the news of uh, this uh, horrible, nightmarish attack. They were well armed. They were training. They had a plan, uh, and they were prepared to carry out their attack. According to the FBI, the men were apparently angry because of Governor Whitmer's restrictions during the coronavirus pandemic, including those on gyms. Tensions have been... Yes, yes, yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> There's another stereotype. The in Michigan for weeks <laughs> with militia members, some of them armed, at one point descending on the state house last spring, intimidating lawmakers. The FBI infiltrated and wiretapped one of the groups after getting a tip that the men were allegedly plotting against police and planning to attack the state capitol in an attempt to overthrow the government. With an informant listening in, they call Whitmer a tyrant. One of the suspects said, "How dare!" How dare you call Governor Whitmer a tyrant? Do you, do you have you ever seen those First Amendment audit videos where those people doing the, taking that talk to the cops and they're like, "You're a tyrant, sir. You're a tyrant because you can. You can call people a tyrant." And snatch and grab the governor. Just grab the expletive. The allegedly one. I'm gonna assume the expletive is bitch. Wanted to take her to a maybe cunt secret location in Wisconsin for a trial. A trial that would end in execution. All of us in Michigan can disagree about politics, but those disagreements should never, ever amount to violence. An angry Governor Whitmer today calling out President Trump. Just last week, the President of the United States stood before the American people and refused to condemn white supremacists and hate groups like these two Michigan militia groups. Are you willing tonight? to condemn white supremacists and militia groups. Sure. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, go ahead. Look, look at the difference in old Joe over there. Just killing look at it. that young whippersnapper. <laughs> Just killing it. Listen, right proud proud boys, boys, stand back and stand by. At one point, the president tweeted there was a need to liberate Michigan. <laughs> so let's get with us to Pierre Thomas tonight in Washington. Pierre, where does this uh, case stand tonight? News spots are very difficult to get, especially on network television. We've been at this for, what, almost five minutes? They've talked yeah. about this. How how many other things do they talk about for five minutes at length on nightly news? Nothing. Nothing. But for this, for this you're getting as much of it rammed down your David, throat. The investigation is ongoing. And rightfully so, as how they're describing it, right? So obviously, these men are detained. Uh, without parole, uh, they are sent to federal prisons while being held because it they're is a treated, terrorist charge. These guys are treated worse than the illegal immigrants that murder people who, who really should be treated as an uh, act of war and they should be in Guantanamo and not in, even in our judicial system. Lobo. Yeah, these guys, these guys are treated even worse. Those military-aged men... They uh, they worked hard to come here to America to continue their lifestyle. How dare you go after the yeah. extremists? They've changed. They're in America uh, now. Yeah, I don't they know should be you... treated like terrorists uh, uh, invading yeah, our you... country. I don't know if you know this, uh, Lobo, but... Uh, yes. Uh, hey, I'm going to put you back in the green room, Lobo. We got another caller, but uh, stay right there. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you back in uh, when we get a chance. Thanks for calling in. Uh, we got Charlie, the mad fiddler with us. Charlie, how's it going? Pretty good. I just, can you hear me all right? We can hear you perfectly. We got you, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, I just, I just got back from work, so I'm just tuning in. I'm going to have to go back and watch the, the rest of the show right. later. But, but have good. you seen the, the, talking about the FBI thing, have you seen the Babylon B uh, take on that? Whole no, thing? no, I didn't. Tell well, us. Well, check it out. They they did a skit on the FBI infiltrating one of those militia groups. It's it's absolutely hilarious. Well, we'll have to check. We'll play yeah. it for the intro. For well, I'll talk to the person that runs the intro. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, see if he can't. Play um, it. Also on the knots, I don't know. What, I I like I said, I haven't heard the conversation about the Nazi thing, but. Uh, I live in uh, Southern North Carolina, and I and about a year ago I went to the transfer station, and they, they have old books and stuff that you know people donate, and you can go in and get them for free. And I found a Nazi photo album. Oh wow! Uh, it it was a commemorative uh, award ceremony for this general, or I don't know, I don't know really what the the rank was of this guy, but it was the it showed all the pictures of battalions of people on the on the fairgrounds, 
and there was a podium there and it had a picture of him at, at the age he was being recognized. And then there was an earlier photo that looked like during the actual war. And then there was where he was enlisted into the military. So he was like, looks like about 17, 18 years old at the time. But I ended up putting it at an auction nearby and I got 70 bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the funny thing is, I said, there's probably a Nazi family living right here yes. in my neighborhood. <laughs> Someone was embarrassed of grandma's past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we got to get this off the streets. Your uncle was so handsome back in the war. I'm going to bug out. I, I enjoy listening to you guys. I'm well, gonna, I yeah. want to Thanks for calling ask, in, Charlie. I want yeah. to ask you a question before you go, Charlie. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, how old are you, first of all? I'm 67. You're 67. So uh, your first impression of the FBI as growing up uh, in your childhood, like when you thought of the FBI, what did what did you think? What was, what was your thought process? What did you think Actually, they did? I didn't know about the FBI until I was into my 20s, I think, and then we... They started having, you know, shows, well, you know, like Dragnet and stuff like that. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, that was on. But as far as knowing anything about the FBI at the time, I, I was actually, a couple of years ago, I was actually at the DMV uh, helping a guy register his, his, the camper that I had sold to him. I had to sign the paperwork. And I actually got to meet a young FBI agent. And he was actually, he heard our conversation. We were trying to figure out what we need to do next. And he actually walked right up and, and told us what we needed to do to, to get the, the thing registered, where we had to go. And he had the he had a tag on and everything. But, you know, I think all the low-level guys are, are good good people. I think it's when whenever you get up into the higher ranks of any organization, it's all corrupt. It seems like we say that now about anything. It's just yeah, like it's yeah. like everything mid and above is just gone to trash, and the you know, and eventually it beats down on the new people that are ground level, and either they they compromise or they leave. It seems like yeah, those I, you know, I've listened to a lot of different YouTubers, and uh, I really believe they they say that most of the Hollywood scripts of you know, detective show. It's all actual real life stuff that these people have done. You know, say you know, it all the time. FBI or CIA, or they don't have to write scripts. They just no. go back to their files and <laughs> yeah. make a television show out of it. Well, thanks so much for uh, your uh, your thought on it, Charlie. We yeah. uh, look forward to having you on for the next show. Yeah, I always enjoy what you guys put on. Thanks a lot. Well, I appreciate thanks, it, Charlie. Charlie. Thanks so much. Uh, okay, uh, so let's bring Lobo back on here. Lobo, Lobo. Okay, so uh, we're here. Uh, resettle here. Where were we? Guys. Governor Whitmer. Yeah. Go hey, ahead. One thing. Um, th th I don't know if you guys have seen this or you have kids uh, at high school age, but I've got um, a daughter that is in high school, and this summer the FBI was offering uh, internships. And she's kind of interested in law enforcement. She didn't do it this this summer, but next summer she'll probably do it. So the FBI's uh, get starting earlier, and and can you imagine how hard it is, uh, you know, for uh, the plumbers union to get internships mass emailed out to all the students? I mean, the FBI has an inside track, and they're using it to, you know, get you know, young people that are interested in law enforcement, even in high school now. Do, do, so, doesn't that, mean... that, that is that I met with the FBI just the other day and I, and I kind of asked, I was said, you know, how are, how's, you know, business or whatnot. And they're like, oh, was, <laughs> you know, like she flat out was like, you know, things are, you know, things are different. You know, she's like, uh, it's it gets harder and harder to find people that want to join. So we've got some things, and she left it at that. And with you saying that, that is, you know, that just goes hand in hand. Look at them just trying to, you know, fuck. What is it, Quantico or whatever they do? Why well, you just, nah, we ain't got that. Just come on in. We'll put you yeah, in the guest for uh, a minute. It looked like you had to just uh, 
send them about a two paragraph uh, essay and you probably rubber stamped in and they can kind of get an idea of, of your chops and, and kind of, it, it's kind of a, for a person that's geared like that, it's not a bad career. I mean, your, your, your salary is all, always going to be at the top of a pay scale. They're never going to have budget issues. I mean, you're going to get your raises every year. You're going to get your cost of living. You're going to get your inflation, everything just typed into a computer and it's going to be in your bank account. So, and you know, I just don't know how they're getting people to do this unethical shit. I mean, that just blows me away that uh, if somebody said, hey, we're going to, we need you to go out here and act like you're mad about something, I'd be all, uh, I don't think I signed up for that, dude. Exactly. That's the thing is, is you know, Charlie said, everyone, I think, starts with the purest intentions. Like you go join the military, you join these three letter agencies because you want to do something good. And then. 10 years in you're doing nothing but fucking dirt bag shit and you're just like ugh like but then you're too deep then it's it's it, then you have to figure out where you went and how do you you know how do you you know go and grow that way it I seems like it. it seems like a lot of these people including um oh, what was his name that was on there uh David uh, uh Gletty uh, it seems like a lot of these people are um uh, are people that got in trouble with the law and Ooh. they're the ones being used as the social social media guinea pigs and creating mm. these groups and then they report to their handler what's going on and then it goes you know from you, you see some of these marches and it looks too well funded to just be by a concealed informant uh, but may uh, it, it appears that what they're well and well i'll show you exactly what i mean this is not just a concoction well, we we had that talk about some of the shooters remember where it was like hey you were given envelope a or b you know we kind of have you by the tails because you've done xxx wrong if you want to forget about those we have option b over here that makes a lot of freaking sense mm -hmm. if you think about it. Yeah, it and, does. And I'm going to I'm going to show you exactly how they did it. Remember there was 13 men involved in this terrorist plot against the uh, Governor Whitmer, the kidnapping and and perhaps the murder of the dear governor of Michigan. And uh, let me play this little clip right here. Testimony in the retrial of Adam Fox and Barry Cross. Obviously, uh, 2 years have passed now and this is the result of the um, court case. Croft is expected to end tomorrow. Fox and Croft are accused of organizing the plot to kidnap the governor over the state's COVID-19 shutdown in the summer of 2020. Their first trial ended in a hung jury and the acquittal of two other men. You say Joe Lafergie has more from the federal courthouse in Grand Rapids. As this retrial nears an end, we're hearing from one of the men found not guilty in the first trial. I mean, this is a group of dudes who shoot guns and talk crap. Brandon Caserta should know. He was part of the group. Caserta was one of 13 men arrested in October of 2020, charged in connection with a plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer over the state's COVID-19 lockdown. Caserta was tried along with Adam Fox, Barry Croft, and Daniel Harris this spring. The jury found Caserta and Harris not guilty. They couldn't agree on a verdict for Fox and Croft, who the government claims led the effort. Government lawyers asked for a retrial. So this detailed terrorist attack that they were planning was a Facebook messenger group that made a joke about stealing a Black Hawk helicopter and flying it by Governor's Whitmer's, Governor Whitmer's house. And then maybe, the, and then, the, you know, of the 13 guys in the group chat, one of them said something along what constant mayhem would say be like well let's shoot the bitch you know? <laughs> <laughs> don't you do me like that don't you do me. out of the 13 eight of them worked for the fbi what i was gonna say how weak the case is that the 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 jury that the fbi picked 
didn't even it didn't even work in their favor because the peers were like, this is complete fucking bullshit. Like it was complete entrapment. The FBI set up the group. The FBI recruited people into the group. And then the FBI tried to radicalize the two. Well, they had other people who were also working for the FBI that they didn't know were working for the FBI. And so those guys were like, oh, yeah, let's take them on. And so you get this weird effect where they're like, hey, I could buy ammo. And then one guy's like, well, I could use the ammo. Oh, well, let's, you know. And then they're both reporting back to their handlers, to different handlers who were all working for the FBI, except for the three guys or four guys that uh, got completely acquitted from any charges uh, from <laughs> it didn't even exist. There was no plan to steal the governor. It was just a bunch of dudes bullshitting on Facebook. That is scary. I mean, I've, <laughs> it was complete I've been, it, yeah. Can you imagine um, you look back at it, just conversations you've had with people at parties or around campfires and, you're not necessarily agreeing with anybody, but you're just in the room and there's some stuff being said that you're just like, if they, so there was a recorder in that or people uh, agging it on. This is just a mess, man. I'm That's listening in all our phones. The, well, like the, the video game community is always like, man, if they would ever go back and listen to those party chats or, you know, read those messages after you stomp on a, you know, young kid in, in Madden. We, oh, we'd yeah. all be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you damn well know they have it recorded and stored away for the right time. Because never forget what that one guy said on his grinder day. It's a fine line for entrapment. It's a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. Fine line for entrapment. So I don't think it's that uh I don't think it's that uh, far of a stretch to think that the uh FBI is having a heyday with their new slogan of 2024, make America Nazi again. <laughs> who's, in, who's in charge of their marketing? Like, honestly, let's, let's come on. It's so obvious. Somebody lied on their resume. It's, 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 so, it's a <laughs> DEI hire. Yeah. Uh, Lobo, I don't, I didn't know if you knew this or not, but we got, I know, I don't want you to be creeped out, but I figure this What's is a great up? way to finish the show. We got uh, exclusive photos, a video of uh, you getting your hair uh, nails done. Uh oh, let's see. Uh. <laughs> oh my god! I apologize. That was very mean and uncalled for. Uh, I just feel like we've known. I've you seen your hands, Corey. Those are your hands. Those are show them. <laughs> show these, the audience. Those are your hands. All right. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, look at this. Look oh at this woman's hands. Look. Could you imagine uh, sucking on those things? Uh, oh, oh. A little soft. It looks like, little, it looks like toes. It's, yeah, they do. That looks like a wild animal that belongs in a forest. <laughs> it's a bear hawk. Oh, oh my goodness. All right. Well, I... I think that's uh, that's a good way to end the show. Lobo, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate it, man. Later, uh, guys. Good. Thanks for doing the show. We'll talk to you later, all right? Sounds all right, thanks, good. Lobo. Thanks again, Lobo. May, anything you want to finish off with before uh, before we end the night with the Kiffness himself? No, just, I mean, you know, check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. Give us a like, subscribe, like, you know, subscribe. just yeah. call in, just, you know, shoot the shit with us. As you see people do it. We just have a good time, you know, yeah. and, very and we get, interesting we, things. We get unique perspective. Like who knew yes. the FBI is recruiting in high schools? Yes. Now we know. Yeah. And, and, and I just pause on that thought. I wanted to say it, but doesn't it seem like if you're trying to attract a high school demographic, you want someone you're in complete control of their training. You don't want someone that's crossing over or, you know, tied to anything else. You want complete control over that person's career. And you see it in military, obviously, uh, but the FBI. I mean, it's, that's a, that was a great phantom fact by Lobo. Um, we're going to finish the night off with John Denver and then the Kiffness. And, uh, have a happy night. And remember, it's never goodbye. It's just until 
next time. Have a good night, everybody. In the field, the body's burning As the war machine just keeps right on turning Death and hatred, hatred to mankind Poisoning their brainwashed evil little minds Country roads, take me home It's Judgment Day, I must atone, Satan laughing, spreads his wings, take me home, country road. I'm on meth. I'm on meth. If you don't join, if you don't subscribe to Phantom Facts Society, then don't talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> yeah, ever.